The 17 one-hand dressage stallion Jovian, that died rather suddenly only a week after competing at the top of the sport at the World Championship, impressed all those that rode him and handled him. Let's look at where he came from genetically and what he passed on. Jovian was born in the Netherlands from Dutch warm blood stock, and so it's of no surprise to find the big names, Jazz, Olivier, Craxy, in the back of his pedigree, although his dam did contribute a tiny bit of Oldenburg with her sire, uh, grandsire, sorry, Froling. But for the most part, all Dutch lines, although Jovian himself was never approved with a Dutch warm blood, but he was approved with almost all the other big warm blood stud books. The sire line stems from Olivi, who competed at Grand Prix, through down to UB40, who was imported to the US and stood at Iron Spring Farm and competed himself up to Pre St. George, and finally down to Apache, the excellent and electric Grand Prix performer that also unfortunately died quite young. Apache, Jovian sire, is an interesting case of a horse considered too electric and crazy for some, while being praised by his rider and those that handle him as a very generous and excellent performer. The fact that as a young stallion he had trouble handling the energy of the stallion shows probably scared a lot of people, particularly in North America for sure. But in Europe, he was quite popular for the quality he passed on, and with maturity, let's keep in mind that he did compete at Grand Prix for many years. In fact, between 2015, the year he reached the Grand Prix level at the age of 10, and up to 2019, he competed in over 30 Grand Prix in FAI competition, winning a handful, placing in over 10 of them, with scores in the low 70s and up to 80. In fact, his report from his stallion test in the Netherlands make no mention of any difficulty in his character under saddle or in the stable, and he was in fact recommended for difficult mare for passing on good rideability. He was a KWPN reserve champion and the outstanding winner of the stallion competition in the winter of 2011-2012. Ridden almost all his life by Emily Scholtens, Apache joined the Dutch Olympic squad in 2015. His offspring have certainly proven that he did pass on good reliability to a certain point. Jovian, being a mild-mannered, focused stallion that reached Grand Prix at the age of eight, and so was another son of his by, that reached the Olympic podium also quite early in its career, Gio, written in Tokyo by Charlotte Dujardin, and that was a model of performance and composure. Both of them, interestingly, out of a dam by Tango. Although Apache was bred to a wide variety of mare and produced a whole collection of approved sun, notably Comlodi, now in North America, Grand Galaxy Win, also a popular stallion till he was gelded, and Indian Rock, to mention only a few from his Dutch Wamblood approved cohort. So Jovian came by his talent with a healthy contribution from his sire line. His dime line, and by that I mean the production from the female tail line, is not as spectacular, but has produced some good riding horses also. His dam, Zenith, was by Clocks Tango, a proven Grand Prix competitor himself, and she placed in test for young riding horses before moving to a career as a broodmare for most of her life. She was bred four times in all to Apache, but only Jovian performed well. His full sister, Onith, however, that you can see here, produced the mare Idol, who in turn became the dam of the licensed Toto Gold, or Nice Boy, by Toto Jr. Zenith, Jovian's dam, also sired Friend by Rousseau, who is also competing at Grand Prix level. Very fertile, she produced 14 offspring, and she ultimately received a special award from the KWPN as an elite dressage mare, clearly passing on some good qualities. Zenith is half-sister to the Stir mare, Upshot by Olivi, from which the licensed stallion Asterix descend. Uh, he won the, young, uh, the World Championship for Young Dressage Horse in 2010 and 2011, also under Emily Scholten from the Netherlands, and achieved further dressage uh, success in the higher levels. Back to Jovian. At 11 years old, Jovian had already been competing at Grand Prix for three years, most of the time under Andres Halkstrand, but during his suspension from the sport, Patrick Kittel had taken over the reins and campaigned him in Europe with success. In Andreas Halkstrand's eyes, Jovian was without fault. He often talked 
about how easy Jovian was to train, what a good feeling of power, suppleness, and responsiveness he gave under saddle, and that he was consistently good in the contact. Supposedly, Alf Muller, who rode him as a young horse, declared him almost boring, as there was no major challenge for the big young stallion. His rideability, I guess, was as high as it could possibly be. Watching him early on, it's obvious that he was loaded with talent. He progressed very quickly, reaching Grand Prix at the age of eight. Similar to what we see with Zonic Plus these days, a talented horse able to reach this level with apparent ease. Rarely sick or needing time off for soundness issue, Jovian appeared to be comfortable in his job, if not front page news spectacular. He never broke the 80% barrier in his judged performance, usually hovering in the high 70s, and at the World Championship in 2025, his last competition, he finished 17th, with Mark in the low 70s. With the early death of his sire, Apache, who succumbed to laminitis at only 11 years old, he was certainly seen as a worthy successor. And in fact, as we will see, he produced quite similarly to his sire. As always in these videos, I am mostly interested by what a stallion produces, and in this department, Jovian was unlike a lot of other horses in that he did pass on some things very reliably, perhaps not stamping his look, but his breeding value clearly show that his biggest influence was in the overall frame, size, as well as movement. He also seemingly consistently passed on his sloped croup. His walk was his weakest point, and so his score in that department is spectacularly low and consistent, but he made up for it, it seems, in the quality of suspension and power of his trot and canter. Breeders and those that have his sons and daughters talk of their great temperament and rideability. Not all of them are giants, but they're on their larger size. His fertility was far from spectacular, and for many years he was not known to have good frozen semen, despite a very high stud fee. His frozen semen at least improved somewhat over time, but it seemed to have kept his number of offspring a little bit on the low side. But his sire had almost 2,000 offspring, while Jovian currently hovers just under 1,000. Maybe his legacy will be that even out of hot and sensitive lines can come spectacular rideability, and that size can also be paired with lightness and gentleness. Jovian died on September 5th, 2025, from complication of a gelding operation, something that does carry risk in mature stallion for sure, but clearly something went terribly wrong to the point that he could not be saved. At 11, he certainly still had plenty of years in front of him. His frozen semen remains available, of course, but generally, after the death of a stallion, the demand for it, sorry, is certainly greatly reduced. We shall see how his offspring perform in the future, as they are still quite young, but the ones that have reached performance state, the performance stage, uh, there's a handful of them, and they are certainly doing quite well. He also has uh, 15 licensed sons at this point. Some of them have approved, and I think those will keep on and pass on his legacy. I think I will leave it at that for this video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this review, and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more of these type of stallion analysis. And thank you for watching.